Hello there. Today I want to run through a practical demo of a Solidity smart contract that implements a shell game. It's a picture here. Um, if you don't know what a shell game is, it's basically a simple betting game where there are three shells and under one of these shells there's a P or a ball and if you guess which shell contains the P or the ball, you win. If you guess incorrectly, you lose. So what, are, what we're going to do today is just use the Chrome browser to code out a smart contract. We're going to deploy it to the Conflux network blockchain. We're going to interact with it. We're going to verify it. And we're going to show you some really interesting, unique uh, features that the Conflux blockchain has on top of the standard uh, Ethereum virtual machine. So this is the ecosystem for Conflux. Again, we're just going to use, this is the native wallet for the network. It's called Fluent Wallet. We are also going to use Conflux Scan, which is the uh, blockchain explorer for Conflux network. Now to code and deploy our smart contract, in the browser, we're going to use Chain IDE. Uh, again, it's fully featured uh, development environment for Solidity in the browser, which is great because you don't need to have um, any software deployed on your actual computer to do what we're going to do today. Okay, so if I'm going to keep this simple, but I'm going to focus on concepts I think are important to know. Um, so this is a Solidity, con solidity contract, um, contract shell game. Basically, this implements the rules of our game so that they can be executed on the blockchain. Um, I want to run through it quickly. So at the beginning of our contract, we declare three variables. The range, it's like the number of shells. Uh, the number, which is our winning number. And this pad, which is a useless number. Uh, but I'll explain why that's required later. This constructor function, when this contract is deployed to the blockchain, basically these uh, three statements are executed, giving our variables values. Uh, we're going to emit a guess event when a user guesses, because in blockchain world, whenever you write to the blockchain, you actually don't get a return value directly back. The way that uh, like a web page that was being used to interact with the smart contract would know if the user won or lost would be by reading um, this event. So this is just a function that creates um, a random integer. Pretty standard. I'm not going to go into why, how it does it right now, but you can look it up online. Um, this is the function we're going to use to send CFX, which is the native cryptocurrency of the Conflux blockchain, back to the user. And this is the meat and potatoes of our contract. This is where we're evaluating if a guess is a win or a lose. It's pretty simple, but there's some things in here. Basically, we are requiring that um, the user has sent us at least one CFX. It's called Ether here. That's just a standard symbol in the uh, Solidity coding language. Basically, OK, so we're going to evaluate the guess. If the guess value provided is equal to the number that is stored on the blockchain in the state of this smart contract, then it's a win. And we're going to do this. So basically, we are going to reassign our number to a new random number because we want to be able to play the game again. We're say the win is true, the winnings equals two ether. Really, we're going to send back two CFX. And here's where we send that two CFX back to the user. Now, if they didn't guess correctly, uh, we are going to 
similarly to what we did up here with our winning number, we're going to reassign our kind of useless number. We're going to say the win is false. Um, set the winnings to the minimum of the cryptocurrency that can be sent. And we're actually going to send that back to the user. Now, why do we do this? So on the blockchain, when you pay for gas as a user, you're actually paying for the computation that's happening on the blockchain. So you can see if we didn't provide these in the case of a, a losing gas, then the amount of gas it would cost for a win or a loss would actually be different and the user could use that information to to kind of understand if their guess is correct before actually sending it. And we don't want that. It kind of undermines the whole purpose. And actually have um, a worse copy of this contract I'll use to, um, to show you that later. And then after all this is done, we emit an event saying there was a guess. This is the person that sent it. Did they win or lose? This is how much they got back, and what was their guess. And down here, we just have some utility functions. Get number. Now, this is only usable by the contract owner. So we're going to use it for testing, make our lives a little easier. Uh, but your standard user won't be able to to know what the you know what the winning number is because that wouldn't be a good game. And this one also is a only available to the contract owner, and it allows us to change the range. So if we want to change the number of shells in our shell game, we can do that this, using this function. Now, let's get into it. Let me connect my Fluent Wallet. Cool. And it says here I'm connected to Conflux Test Network. This is also known as the Conflux Core Space Test Network. Um, I'm going to compile. And estimate the gas. I'm going to deploy it. This is similar if you're uh, used to using MetaMask. The Fluent experience is very similar. Say yes, we want to deploy our contract. And we're going to wait for information here. Looks like it was successful. And this is actually the contract we just deployed. As you can see on Conflict Scan, here's our contract. Yay! Now you see it doesn't have any CFX in it. So what we can do is from inside chain IDE we can get the number Let's see. get the number because I am the admin or the owner of the contract so I can call that and okay so the, the winning number is one I'm gonna say I want to send one CFX to this guess of to this guest function, and I'm going to say zero. I want it to be a incorrect guess. Actually, increase this so we can get some more money in the contract. Okay, you see this number, point zero 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 four. Let's remember that. The CFX costs about five cents on the main net right now, so. To interact with this contract costs basically nothing. And if we go up here, refresh, we can see just less than three. Because remember, part of our contract is on a losing guess, we send a tiny bit of drip or you know, a tiny bit of cryptocurrency back. Cool. So now we have enough to actually make a winning guess. So if I say one, 
and submit. See how the gas is exactly equal, whether it's a loss or a win? That's exactly what this contract is designed to do. And so I can show you a little bit of the guess event. So here, if I click on the transaction, whoop, I've been doing some testing. This is our transaction. Click into the logs. Go to the args. You can see we guessed one and we won. Winning equals true. Excellent. And our winnings was two CFX. So this is how, again, if a UI was actually, a user was clicking on a UI to guess, this is how the UI would know if they won or lost. Let's go back up here. Cool, so we've got a working contract. If we do get number again, should have changed. Now it's two. Um, let's collapse this. You can see the other functions defined here are, you can, you can use them all from here. I don't want to mess with the ownership right now. Uh, but I do want to speak to. How does it know I'm the owner? That's because at the very top we imported ownable. Um, so these two contracts, ownable and context, these are um, standard uh, open Zeppelin contracts. You'll see these, if you look at other smart contracts, you'll see these used kind of across the industry. Um, but these two contracts being included are what allow me to say uh, only owner. So that's why they're there. Uh, let's jump over to my bad contract real quick. <laughs> Again, this is the same contract, but in this case, uh, if it's a losing guess, we do nothing. So I wanted to just use this to illustrate uh, what if we didn't actually balance out the computation and the transactions. So I already deployed this. Let's do a get. It's one. Let's see what the gas used. One for a win is okay. Point three seven. I can actually cancel it. Let's see what the gas used for a loss is. Two two. See how it's different. Now, this usually doesn't matter, but in a contract where you're actually providing a game or some kind of you know gambling style contract uh, this is critical because let's say there was a hundred you know there's a hundred different shells I could sit here as a user and just guess each number and look at the, the gas used until it changed and then I would know that that is the winning number and I would submit okay back to our good contract uh, let's take a look at the events again. So remember I was saying our guess event is all nicely parsed here. It tells us what these things are. If we go to conflict scan, look at our contract. This is that same transaction. And if we look at the logs, you'll see a whole bunch of hex data. And it does decode if you guess what the type is, but it's certainly not as useful as what we have inside Chain IDE. And that is because we have the, the ABI or the schema of our contract in ID and it's able to decode what these things are. What we can do to have that same functionality up here and for everyone, you know, 
because all users can use this complex scan is we go to our contract click contract and we have to verify it so it's called shell game I'm clicking MIT license because that is what I have up here say no optimization select the compiler now this is in order to verify this we have to flatten the contract and you can use uh, JavaScript libraries for that hardhat or I believe truffle as well I'm not sure but for the purposes of this let's explain what that actually is so what that is is these three SOL files are being essentially flattened into one file and we can do that just in the browser ourselves there's a trick to it take out the import statements there can only be one license line and you have to basically reproduce the import order that you would be getting if you did the standard import functionality so shell game will be on the bottom ownable will be right above it I'll copy everything except the license paste it in here it's okay to have multiple pragma lines comment out this import and copy the content of context <laughs> again at the top here to kind of replicate to preserve that import order and you've got one big file just copy it go to complex scan paste it in and submit voila didn't really have to learn any JavaScript libraries or I think they're also a shell script that actually does it in hardhat so some people get turned off by that now look it has our contract we can read the contract from here and we can also write the contract from here right so we can say Yeah, we've already done it, so we don't have to do it from here. But I wanted to show you that. Because I think a lot of people stop before verifying a contract because they kind of get scared of how to flatten a file. You can just do it manually. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover today. Um, we contract back shell game you know, we wrote a contract that implemented these rules in the blockchain we were able to interact with it kind of prove out what we expected it to do we verified it uh, there's whoop, there is one more thing we can do actually so Conflux has a unique feature wherein um, the gas fees that are charged to the user when I go to guess can actually be sponsored by any address on the blockchain so let's go through that real quick so this gas fee is for computation And if I go to the complex blockchain, I copy. This is the address of our contract that we want to sponsor. Um, there's a little bit of a reference here. Conflux has internal contracts for uh, admin control, staking, kind of common functions. 
and we're going to use this sponsor whitelist control contract. Um, I actually already have it up. So we're on the test net. This is the sponsor whitelist control conflux internal contract. You know, it's part of the blockchain itself. Um, now I want to write to it. So there's two types of fees that can be sponsored. There's collateral, which is for any time we're storing data on the blockchain, and there's gas. So if I go here, payable amount, non, I say I want to sponsor 50 CFX, input the address of our contract, and this is how much you want to sponsor per transaction. Not very good with these numbers, so I'm going to take this number. So what this is is two CFX or you know two Ethereum if we were actually using the Ethereum network. I'm going to say here that's the max I want to sponsor per transaction. Say go. Oh no. What does this say? No, sponsor should at least sponsor upper bound. Okay. Cool. No, I'd have to do some digging. Basically, this is, you know, typical. Conflux, I believe, has 18 decimals, so this is somewhere near 18 decimals. Okay, so I sponsored the gas. Now I have to go get our contract admin again. I've added, so I've added CFX to sponsorship of this. Now I want to say who I want to actually sponsor. Contract address, Let's say this. This one is a little funky. What we do is we provide an array of addresses. But it says somewhere here in the documentation zero address. This is what we want. So if we add the zero address, and this is all in the documentation, you should read this if you intend on doing this. If we add the zero address as part of this, essentially that sponsors everyone. So I want to be able to, I want everyone to be sponsored. read the contract, I say get <laughs> say okay, cool. It's showing me I have fifty CFX available to sponsor this address. Cool. So I think now if we go back to J ID we say, I want to guess again. It should show us that this gas is sponsored. Nope, it does not. It might not be taking effect yet. Or I believe I did it incorrectly. Or, I believe we are sponsoring the gas, and now we can actually sponsor the storage collateral. Set sponsor for collateral. Contract address. 
once again, let's say 40, just to show. Just have different numbers for both. That has gone through. Cool. Now, there is actually a little tool on the scan. Where you can check, see if, and check your sponsorship status. So if I put our address in here, It does. So we've got 40 CFX for storage and 50 CFX for gas fee. Now, when we go here, the full fee should be sponsored. Wonderful. Look at that. So now, users can interact with this contract for free. Now, I don't know if I would want that for this type of contract, but this is really an important point of the Conflux blockchain is um, anybody can sponsor the gas and the storage for a contract and it enables some really interesting use cases even ones where the user never actually transacts with with crypto themselves so I think that's enough um, hope you enjoyed this it's been my first uh, blockchain related video, so stay tuned for more. Thank you.